It's a sandy beach. Beautiful blue sky. Palm trees. Crabs running along the sand. And the sound of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Can you feel a breeze there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as you look at this ocean and the sand, what do you find particularly interesting about this place? Look around you. How does it make you feel? What's interesting about it? Makes me feel like home. Mm -hmm. Makes me feel close to the elements, close to water. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now you say this place makes you feel like home. Do you feel like you have a body in this place? I do. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your feet as you're standing on that sand. And tell me what your feet look like there. They're barefoot. Mm -hmm. Are they male or female feet? They look male. Mm -hmm. What does the rest of you look like? Imagine you have a spiritual mirror in front of you. Let's find out what you look like on this beach. I have worn clothes. Mm -hmm. Tell me about these clothes. The trousers are ragged on the bottom with a rope or for a belt. Mm -hmm. And I have no shirt on. What does the rest of you look like? Take a look at your hands. What do your hands look like? They look bronzed. Mm -hmm. They're just normal hands. The dark hairs on the back. Mm -hmm. Reddish skin. What is your face? And hair look like? I have blonde hair, mm -hmm. green eyes, bushy eyebrows, a long face, no facial hair. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? Mid twenties. Mm Check in with your feelings and see how you feel standing on that beach. How does it feel? I feel carefree. Mm -hmm. Not a care in the world. I feel that everything around me is safe. There are no dangers. I feel as if I could wade into the ocean and just frolic in it, safety, safely. So allow yourself to soak in that feeling, feeling safe and carefree. Breathe it into every cell of your body, appreciating this wonderful feeling. And now I'd like to see where it is that you live. So let's close that scene and let's find out where the place is that you call your home. Be there now. It looks like a, a hut with a thatched roof. Mm -hmm. They're very simple things inside. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's inside this hut. 
it's open on one side. There's a doorway that is open that has no covering on it. Inside, there's a table, a crude table. Mm -hmm. I only see two chairs. There's a fire pit in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Inside this place? Inside it. Very small one for cooking. Mm -hmm. There are no windows but for the door. How big is this place? It's small. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to see if you feel as if anybody lives with you. What does it feel like to you? I feel like I live alone. Mm -hmm. But there's I'm just content to be me and not have any rules or or structure to my living. Mm -hmm. I just exist. I don't anticipate anybody joining me. I feel as if I can just go where I want and do what I want. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there anything else from this scene that's important? No, it's benevolent. Mm, very good. So let's close this scene now and let's move ahead to another scene in that same lifetime when something very important is happening. Something that impacts your life be there now. I'm seeing a ship out on the water. What does the ship look like? It looks like an old schooner. Mm -hmm. It has masts on it. It's coming closer to the shore. Check in with your emotions. What do you feel? I don't feel right about it. Mm -hmm. I might even not know. I don't know what the intent of it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm ready to extend a hand in friendship. So I watch further on up on the beach as it comes closer. What happens next? It docks out in the harbor and a small boat starts coming forward. I see three, three men in the boat. What do they look like? They have on garb that reminds me of like the 1700s. Mm -hmm. Maybe earlier than that. They're not threatening. What happens next? I invite them to my hut. One of them one of them I fear a little bit. Mm -hmm. One of them is definitely taller than the others, more of a leadership figure. I don't really know if I can 
if I can understand what they say. Mm -hmm. Do you speak different language from them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's happening? We're sitting at the table. And they want to know something from me, but I'm having a difficult time communicating. They lay out some things on the table. Describe these things. What do they look like? They're ornate pieces. One is a is a smooth, pink, almost an agate looking thing in a, a gold frame, small, with a chain, like a pendant. Mm -hmm. There are coins on the table. I have nothing to offer them, because I live humble. They point to the water. And I, I nod as if I understand. And I produce for them a variety of shells, which would be my possessions, my prizes. Mm -hmm. And we trade a couple. And they keep pointing around a distant area making gestures like, I'm almost feeling like they're wondering if there are other people. And I nod my head that there are none. I'm by myself. And the one still looks at me with a lot of distrust, dis distrust like he thinks I'm hiding something. look at him and I place my forehead down on the table to let him know that I am no threat to him. They leave the pendant and a coin and take several of my shells and they get up and leave and go back to the boat. I would rather not see them again. Mm -hmm. How does that leave you? I feel as if my peace has been shattered. Mm -hmm. This is no longer a, a pure area. Other people know about it. People that I don't really trust now. So let's close that scene now and let's move forward to another important scene in that same lifetime when something has impacted your life. Be there now. I go to the point where this person had pointed around a bend. And I see slaughtered sea animals on the shore, a carcass like a whale carcass. And they're harvesting things from it. Who is harvesting? The, the men in the boat. Mm -hmm. And it fills me with real sadness. These are precious creatures of the water. They had no right to do that. 
But yet there's nothing I can do to stop them. They are many and I am one. How has this affected you now? think knowing that I can succumb to a fear of ineffectiveness makes me small and I feel I can be easily upset people who ruin nature or attack innocence, but yet those people were willing to trade with human, with me, but they would cut no slack to those that could not trade with them they take without giving back. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close that scene. And now let's move to another scene of something very important. Be there now. I'm older now. How old do you feel? Perhaps in my 60s. Mm -hmm. Where are you? I'm not in the same location as I was before. I'm on a different stretch of beach. It's not as pristine as it was before. What's changed? The color of the sand has gone from a pure white to more of a dirty brown color. Mm -hmm. The ocean doesn't have the sparkle or the color that it did. The sky is more gray. Everything seems too familiar and lonely. Connect with your emotions. What do you feel when you look out? I feel, feel like I've lived a, an idealistic and an idyllic life. But the world has changed. It's not my world anymore. It's being shared with people I don't trust. Even though I don't live among them. I cling to old ways that will never come back. So now let's close that scene and let's go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. And tell me where you are. I'm in a forested area, staring up at the sky. I see the trees, gaps between them. And I just want to go. So allow yourself to take your last breath and transition out of that body and leave that body behind. And as you transition, I'd like for you to tell me what the purpose of that lifetime was.
purpose was to marry myself to nature, to honor the fish in the water, to honor the plants behind me, the sand beneath me. Do you feel you accomplished that? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I feel like. So what lessons did you learn from that life? I feel that a lesson was that I should not have allowed my perceptions and the beauty that I was living in to become jaded or spoiled or contaminated by others. It was not necessary for me to feel fear or resentment. I could have continued with more of a, a joyous and excitement existence for longer. Mm -hmm. So as you transition away from that body, tell me what happens next. Where does your soul go? I'm floating above the trees. I see the expanse of the ocean and the curve of the earth. I just float up. How far do you go? I see the rim of the earth. And as I look up, I just see white. and a yearning what is this yearning for to go home mm -hmm. so see yourself taking this journey home and tell me what you see along the way see the thinning of the whiteness, beautiful stars and nebula past that. What comes next? I feel that I do stop at one point. Mm -hmm. Let's find out where you stop and if there's anyone there to greet you. Perhaps a guide or a loved one. What are you experiencing? I feel as if there's a, almost like a terrace that I'm slowly drifting up to. Mm -hmm. There's a man standing there. What does he look like? He's robed. His hands are out and his palms are out. And he has a smile on his face. 
It's a welcoming smile. Who is this man? He knows me, but I can't place it. His eyes are very deep green. Ask him who he is. Connect with him mind to mind. <laughs> I think he's he's my cousin Warren mm -hmm. what does he say to you what does he communicate with you He's reminding me how of times that we spent when he was on earth. I missed him a lot. What else does he tell you? He's asking me to come with him. And he holds out his hand and I hold his. And I ask him if he still, if he still feels pain. And he says, no, not here. And we walk for a while. and sit down on a bench. Where is this bench? There's no substance to where we're at. Mm -hmm. It's just open, a lot of white, almost billowy cloud-like. Mm -hmm. And we sit on the bench. And he tells me that we were for each other. It's almost like he's saying that we've done this before and we'll do it again. And what's the reason why you're repeating it? Is there a lesson there? It has to do with music. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what it is that you need to learn about music. He's telling me that that just like him Neither one of us need to type music that we feel it. And that something about the tones, the tones that we experience, we can affect how our bodies work.
He's yeah. humming. He's humming a note now. Mm -hmm. See if you can repeat the note. Mm -hmm. And as he hums that note, he's pointing to his stomach. And he's saying that note gives relief. <laughs> and then he, he's humming another note, and he says, "Use this one." If if you have a hard time going to the bathroom, mm -hmm. like urinating, mm -hmm. and he's going to different parts of the body. Go ahead and repeat the notes. Ask him to give you the different notes. The note to relax is deep. Mm -hmm. He does it so his chest resonates. And I feel it on my chest. What other areas of the body do you need to work on with these notes? The chest mm -hmm. and the stomach. Let me give you the notes. The stomach is... And the chest is... And I can feel those both in the right spots. Do the eyes have a note that will assist with any irritation or burning? That's the note. He's saying it higher, just a little bit higher. For me, that note is just below my eyes, the top of my sinuses, mm -hmm. and he smiles. What about headaches and migraines? What would you use for that? He smiles and says, if you sing too hard, it will hurt your head. And then he laughs. <laughs> That's Warren. Mm He says not to miss me because we're here now. Mm -hmm. Can Warren help you with the rest of your body? Or is that something that could be done by another guide or his higher self? He doesn't reply. He says, I've shown you what I can show you. So can Warren show you where you went to to meet with your guides and counsel to pick this life as Don? Can he guide you there? Let's go, he said.
We're walking now along a path that has a shimmering iridescence to it, almost like a like a shell, mm-hmm. the inside of a shell. Where does this path lead? It looks like a like a beautiful slice of a meadow, but yet the meadow is inside of a structure. Mm -hmm. Beautiful golden light coming down from the ceiling, but the ceiling isn't solid. Describe this place. The walls a smooth texture to them, slight, really slightly reflective. There are three individuals that are seated at a small table. And they ask me to sit. They're very wise. And when they look at me, I don't feel, I don't feel any sense of wrongdoing. There's no shame or regret or any of those emotions, just a just an acceptance. And I ask them, is it okay for me to stay? I don't want to go back down yet. They tell me that I can rest. (laughs) That I can frolic, that's the word. Mm Warren takes me to a place where there are people that I've that I've known in my life. They don't look like them, but I know who they are. Mm-hmm. I can look in their eyes. And there's It's like we're in a small amphitheater. There's tons of them. And we start singing harmonies. And as we sing the harmonies, there are blue lights. Everything turns blue, deep shade of blue. And I'm standing in the middle of this. surrounded all around me with this harmony. It's not a song, it's just harmony. Mm -hmm. And what is the significance of the blue? (laughs) 
What does it represent? <laughs> Warren is next to me and I ask him, and he laughs and he says, it's just your favorite color, you know that. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what the color blue is. And I, and I suppose I've always wanted to know that. What makes up the color blue? And it's this sound. And everybody's helping you see it. Everybody's helping create it. Mm -hmm. I know many of these people as I look around. I played with many of them before. But they don't look like they do in this life. What do they look like? How do they represent themselves there? It's always their eyes. Mm -hmm. Their eyes tell me who they are. Their features are vague. They have, some have square cut brown hair, but they all seem to be in robes that shimmer. And they're all joyful, they're all smiling, and they all look at me as if they know. Mm -hmm. Know what? They just know. Do you make any decisions when you're in this place? Or are you just frolicking there? I'm frolicking, but I know that this is purposeful. That I'm, it's almost like I'm be, being given a, a template of sorts. It's really hard to put into words, but it, it's, it's like this exercise. What do you imagine this template is for? I can call on this. I can use the memory of this when, when I'm not understanding or confused or down. This can lift the spirit. And I can use this color and the tone that goes along with it as connectedness with those around me. They don't have to be singing the notes. They don't have to be generating that color blue. I can do that now and I can be connected with everything around me. What happens next? Warren leads me away. And I'm back with those three, those three men at the small table. And they do tell me it's time now. I don't really see any anything indicating what I should be doing or where I should be going. Why did you ask him? 
I ask them to tell me what should I be doing now with this music? Where should I go with it in the next life? I'm asking about my next life now. All I can get from them is, is transition. They're indicating I need to use this for transition. What kind of transition? What do they mean by that word? When I'm low, in the next life. When there is darkness around me. I can use this template that I was given as an anchor or a buoy to rise above And as my life transitions, that blueness can stay an anchor. I don't know if that makes sense to me though. Do you need to actually recreate that tone? Or just think of the blue? Just think of the blue. Mm -hmm. And the blue will do it. Mm -hmm. Will the blue have a certain vibration that will make you happy? Absolutely. It will have a vibration of happiness mm -hmm. and confidence. So let's find out from your counsel, what's the purpose of having Don, Don's life? What will that purpose be when the soul transitions into the life of Don? What's the reason for going back? I'm hearing I'm hearing that there are no boundaries. I'm also hearing that I should use the blue for leisure. That that there's nothing that I will be given or faced with that is insurmountable. This will be a life where I can, I, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a handful of blue pebbles and casting them out having them scatter all over and knowing that each one of those is a different aspect or a, a, a gift mm -hmm. that I can pursue and follow. I'm being shown that there are no major roadblocks in my path. But I'm free to do what I feel I can do as long as there's joy and excitement, learning, and harmony to everything.
is there at any time a certain point where others are chosen to assist the soul in his new incarnation? Is there a choosing of other helpers? There are. We, Warren takes me by the hand and we leave that room and I see I see in the eyes I know these names I can pick them out and just look at their eyes I don't recognize their features but I know their eyes And they say we will we'll scratch each other's backs and we'll make blue. And this makes sense to me because these are all these are all people I played with and have changed the course of my life. feel a sadness for that like how could I possibly have given back to them what they've given to me ask about that how do you give back said you were the other half you complete your humor your pursuit of perfection smile that's always there and they're telling me that it's not about who has who gives and who takes but there's a melding just like instruments are harmony personalities merge is there anyone else there that has a message for you laughs and says we've done this many times and I feel guilty and I don't know why let's find out why Ask them to give you a picture of why you feel guilty. Where's the origin of that guilt? He just simply says, you were 
raised to be too hard on yourself. Guilt is something that you are producing that's not being given to you. You don't have the need or the right to feel guilt, he says. So what, would, what can we do with that guilt? I'm asking. And he said, gather all the guilt into a tiny point on the top of your head till it's the size of a pinprick and just imagine it spreading out into a circle and going down over your head all the way down your body discharging into the ground go back up and do it again and over and over And indeed, that helps. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Does anybody else have anything to say? We hug and say we'll see each other. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now that we've seen that, let's connect with the higher self. Allow yourself to connect now to that voice within. Do I have permission to speak to the higher self? You do. Thank you. I know that you could have shown Don many different lifetimes today. Why did you show him the one of the man on that beach? He has a great love for the ocean, even though he's never seen the ocean but once or twice. The first time he saw the ocean, He understood that there was a God. That life can remind him that there's just more than the ocean around him. There are lakes, trees, there's beauty everywhere. some people he can trust and others he doesn't have to be a steward of the land and the sea mm -hmm. very good and then he went into the afterlife and met his friends his cousin what was the significance of showing him that what did he had to have to learn from that experience He needed to know that the passing of his cousin was a necessity, that those times that they spent together in, in music and in love are not temporary. They will occur again and perhaps again and again. There are many people in his life that he has known and will know again. And they're a part of the harmony of his life and not just the music. Although the music is very important to him. So 
So what's the purpose of this incarnation? His counsel told him basically he was to have fun. Use his gifts. What do you say? That's exactly what needs to be done. Joy and excitement in every moment. This is a life where small roadblocks were placed in front of him. Early challenges, but always a push, always a shove in the back to, to say, you are your own man. You have your own purpose. You have your own direction. This is not a life of coasting, but a life of fulfillment. No major tragedies and many, many opportunities to go above and beyond what you felt were small means to begin with. Always grow, always grow. Has he always come to this planet for growth? Or has he been other places? This is his home. Earth is his home. How many times has he been here? Hundreds. Mm -hmm. Why has he had an obsession with World War II? He died in World War II. Mm -hmm. What was he? He was in a bomber squadron. I see a gun turret. Mm -hmm. A gunner. Mm -hmm. Who did he? Who was what? What side was he on? Germany. Germany. He hated that war. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other information about that? I see the English Channel. Mm -hmm. What happened on the English Channel? His plane went down and he drowned. Mm -hmm. How is that affecting him now? He was terrified of the water when he was young. Is that why he almost drowned? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could there yeah. have been an exit point at that time? Did he almost choose to leave at that time? Or was he just scared? No, he was... He was deceived by... by the water. Mm -hmm. it, He was in too deep an area, and the way the sun was refracting, the water seemed shallow, so he stepped into it. And, and he started, he knew he couldn't get to the top, so he just started drinking it. Mm -hmm. No. Was, was there a lesson in that? Was he supposed to experience that? It? 
it was by design when he, he was found floating mm -hmm. by an older boy and resuscitated. And within minutes afterwards, he was in the water swimming. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know how to swim before. It was, in, it was a harsh introduction. Mm -hmm. Did someone teach him to swim while he was out of body? What happened in that moment when he was drowning? Between that and when he came back? Was it the same soul? He was given a choice. Mm -hmm. He was given a choice and he remained. Mm -hmm. Was he given more knowledge of how to swim? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who helped him with that? I see wings. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael. I see a blue sword. Mm -hmm. The blue, the color blue. Mm -hmm. The calming blue. Mm -hmm. So when you saw the blue sword, I see wings and a blue sword, mm -hmm. and just a gentle pushback. Do you have a connection with Michael? Yes. Does he have a message for you today? Be at peace, but stand in your confidence. You know how to shove aside fear. Show those you loved and love how to lessen fear. And I hear something I don't understand either. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's being said? That It's important I don't even want to use this word but asking is the order of angels but at times you need to command mm -hmm. command them to help you yes mm -hmm. Stand in your confidence and command when it's necessary. Hmm. Thank you very much. So would you tell Don now what is 
What are his spiritual gifts? He tells me that before he sleeps, he sees these moving pictures in his theta state. What are these moving images? Those moving images are chatter. Mm. Spiritual chatter. And the words he hears. Some are just wisps of memory before drifting to sleep. Others are purposeful. He has heard on several occasions instructions or humor mm -hmm. from his guides. <laughs> and he chooses to feel fright from that. Mm -hmm. But that's changing now. He's awakening. These are no longer mysterious anymore, but friendly to him. So how can he boost them or use them in service to others? He needs to observe when, particularly the audible messages, when they occur, and what images he's seeing at the time. They can be written down or recorded, but if he waits too long, they're lost. Mm -hmm. So keep something like a journal next to his bed so he can write them down? He needs to record them. Mm -hmm. A journal, when he gets pen and paper in hand and focuses his eyes, he will wake up too much. Mm. That tenuous contact will be lost. So should he be doing it verbally? Yes, okay. verbally. So keep a recorder next to him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he have some sort of a clear audience or clear sentient, any of these clairs? Does he, does he have those talents, those gifts? He has the gift of sensing emotions in others. Mm -hmm. When he was very young, He would constantly weep when he would see somebody mentally challenged. Sorrow for them, which was unnecessary. When he walks into room, he can feel the tension in the air if it exists. He can look in someone's eyes and immediately see past facial features and know whether there's sadness or joy or depression. It's hard to block these things sometimes. One of the reasons why he finds alone time comforting is he doesn't have to fight with those those feelings of others. Is that why many empaths like to be by themselves? Yes. It can be difficult to sort out what are your hurts and what are their hurts. Is there a way to cleanse ourselves of others' feelings and emotions that are not ours? some sort of a spiritual ritual that we can do to cleanse ourselves.
crystals can be used, quartz, you can bring the quartz to your, your heart mm -hmm. and let light and love pour in and amplify and restate or an affirmation that you are an aspect of God. You are connected. But in this body, you are responsible for the protection of your own emotions. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the light and love coming in and cleansing until it brims over. Well, he says that he, when he's with people, he feels the need to visualize this loving light pouring through him into them. He wants to know if he's actually interacting interacting vibrationally with them, or is it just his imagination? He's interacting. Mm -hmm. At this time, everyone is interacting. Mm -hmm. We can all act as conduits for love and light. And those that we pour love and light into their higher self can accept or reject this mm -hmm. with no feeling of acceptance or reject rejection on on our part freely offered sometimes freely taken so it's really our free will whether we accept it or not. It is our free will. Mm -hmm. So if you have your heart open to receiving assistance from others, a healer, for example, who sends love and light to you, it will be accepted. It will be accepted unless there are challenges in place. Mm -hmm. If If a person is in pain and another person acts as a conduit of love and light, that higher self can reject, gently reject, or rechannel that love and light, knowing that that individual has a lesson to learn. Mm. And although the love and light is appreciated, It would steer the lesson okay. to the side. All right. Can you, the higher self talk about his heart chakra? He struggles with sensing or visualizing it. So it's like really hit and miss for him, and it seems blocked. What's going on with his heart chakra? Through a lot of his youth, he swallowed a lot of shame that was unnecessary when he was in situations of fear. or regret or of tests his chest would feel like it was squeezing shut mm -hmm. and at this point when he concentrates on his heart chakra he's reminded of, of the feelings of density and compression it's just time. Mm -hmm. So would you allow me to do an exercise to release that shame yes. in his heart? Very good. Yes. 
So I'm going to put my hand over your heart and I'd like for you to begin now pulling from every cell in your body all of that shame, all of that guilt that you've been holding all of these years. Pull it all out. Every bit of it, just allow it to flow. You don't need to hold it any longer. And tell me when I have it all. It's like dark, stuffy cotton, mm -hmm. and it's lifting now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have it. So let me take that and send it to the universe for healing. And now, what would you like to put in that space? Love. Let's put a fire hose of love in there. Feel it pumping in. Compassion. Feel it coming in. What else? Allow it to flood mm. every cell of your being. And I'm going to tap your forehead and let's seal that in. Mm -hmm. And now, <clears throat> would the higher self begin working on his chakra while I place rose quartz on his heart so that he, you can activate it mm -hmm. even further? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you can help his heart now. I'm bringing in... a whirling conduit of light in a circling motion straight down hitting the quartz and flooding his chest he wrestles with the concept of the green of the heart chakra and the whiteness of God's source, light. I'll work on this. Mm -hmm. Would you continue working while we're doing this session today? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. He tells me that he's had many dreams that have been a powerful part of his life. He wants to know what's happened during these incredible dreams. Is he visiting other aspects of himself, other dimensions, other time frames? How can he refine, control, or better interpret these dreams and their recall? He seems to have been recalling them a lot when he was writing. There are many branches that occur every day, small forks in the road, large forks in the road, not only in this lifetime, but other lifetimes that are happening simultaneous. He will visit aspects of himself that are as a result of alternate forks mm. in his road. That's why he will see a neighborhood that reminds him of his home and yet is populated with people that he knows here. And sometimes they're just adventures. Other times, they are looks into the future for him, not in this life. Is this like 
future projections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. possibilities possibilities mm -hmm. so in this dream state that he's having is he just evaluating different things or just journeying to different places for the fun of it he's mostly journeying mm -hmm. he's, That's been, he's been told he's here to frolic yes. and play <laughs> So is that what he's doing? He's just playing? Yes. It's his time to experience. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to advise him on all of these books that he's written? These fantasy books. Are these things that were given to him? These were given to him. Mm -hmm. So what should he do with these books? I don't want to use a, a term supply and demand, but he would need to be willing to commit writing is a passion that is time intensive. And just like a song, if you give somebody something that they really like, they will have expectations of absorbing more of it. Mm -hmm. He must be willing if he would want to go that route to continue to create, and that would put other things to the side. Mm -hmm. So is the writing of these fantasy books one of the pebbles that were thrown out there? One of the pebbles that were thrown out mm -hmm. and that pebble may materialize again mm -hmm. in years to come, but not now. Okay, very good. He tells me that since his spiritual awakening, he sometimes sees rolling waves of white flowing diagonally across his field of closed eyes vision. How are a patchwork of royal blue or floating single pixels of black and white halo or pink or blue is there a significance to all of these things that he's seeing the blue is a reminder of his template mm -hmm. of the blue when he sees that blue, he can harmonize with it. That can bring him comfort and confidence. The rolling waves of white and the pixels the further he progresses in his spiritual journey, the thinner the veil gets. Mm. So he's seeing part of this veil dropping? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does he need to do anything with this information? At this time he can enjoy them, but he can also fixate on the rolling waves of white. Mm -hmm. He's known this now, that there's a calmness to it, a calming action to it. It's not anything that's abhorrent at all. It can be there and he can enjoy it. Okay, very good. Can we talk about his music and singing? Mm. He says it's the most magical part of his day. Yes. What special connection does he have with the music and tones? And would you would be would you be able to tweak his vocal cords to eke out some more tones mm -hmm. and more notes on the high end. Who do we need to call in for this? I can work on this. Wonderful. When he sleeps at night. Mm -hmm. Much of this it's not a, an issue of construction, but an issue of desire. Mm. 
relaxation and desire. So is this kind of like what Michael says, command? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> command his vocal cords to eke out higher endings? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can see him putting his fist up and commanding. <laughs> What about these body rushes that he's getting while he's listening to music? It's much more than hair raising. Music for him is like color to a painter, words to a writer. But music has a frequency. And that frequency, if found in the right combination within a song, can physically lift the energetic body out momentarily. Mm -hmm. He says it feels like Alka Seltzer. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a buzz. Mm. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. <laughs> <laughs> So is he to do anything with his fizzing or just enjoy it? He can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. He can also use that to buttress his aura. Mm. to strengthen his aura, okay. prevent leaks. And this can be done at any time, many times a day. Doesn't have to be in meditation. It can even be when he's just driving in a car. Mm. Okay. If he feels perhaps a judgment on somebody, bring it up and encapsulate in that buzz. It strengthens the aura. Can we talk about when he was younger? He said that when he was about six or seven, there were two entities that were inhabiting his room, his yard, and it was whirly and twirly. They were like two tornadoes. Who were they? They were guides. Were they? Mm-hmm. So why did one act more benevolent than the other one? One was more benevolent, the other was reflecting hmm. Don's agitation, his sorrows, his angers. And when he would look at the one getting agitated, the guide getting agitated or manifesting agitation for him, mm -hmm. He would see that in itself and not like what he saw and back down from those emotions. Hmm. As he would back down from that, those emotions, the guide would relax. Hmm. But it got to a point where he demanded that they leave. Yes. He became fearful of them. Mm -hmm. They had no words for him. There was no means of, of communicating other than sight. Mm -hmm. And he did not like the look of them either. The older, older that he got, the more he associated them with, with funnels mm -hmm. that would suck him up. Why did they look like thick squat tornadoes? They were actually swirling energy. Mm in a counterclockwise motion. Now when he commanded them to leave, did he lose those guides? No. What happened? They were no longer... The, the veil was thin at, at the points that those guides were available to him. Mm. And he just thickened the veil so he couldn't see them anymore. Could not see them anymore. Is that, does that happen a lot to children? 
Yes. What happens when children stop seeing their imaginary friends and guides? Those guides are still with them. But oftentimes, parents, friends, as they persuade the children that these are things to be feared or imaginary, the child picks up on this. And at the point that the child feels that something is wrong with them, they shut the guides out. Mm. Not all are guides. Not all are guides. There can be darkness as well too. Mm -hmm. So just out of curiosity, if one is raising a child that has imaginary friends and is talking to guides, how can a parent raise a healthier child where to empower them, to listen for guidance, and use the wisdom of the guides? They can ask the child, by using the right language of course, they can ask the guy, the, the child to be an intermediary between them and their imaginary friend. Mm -hmm. And when the child understands that the parent is simply looking for a connection, they're more than willing to be a part of that. Very good. Very good. Don tells me that about a half a year ago he asked Archangel Michael before meditation to work on his root chakra open any energy pathways that might be blocked and activate any dormant codes and for three hours he laid there with a sensation of dozens of fingers plucking pulling poking and fluttering inside of him and it still happens when he meditates what's the significance of all of this he's experiencing that now mm -hmm. what's going on what is that the subtle body has a network that runs through. It is not for him, he sees only seven chakras in a tube, mm -hmm. a conduit that runs between them. But there are dozens and dozens of energy points, almost like nerve ganglions, if you want to think of it that way, but mm -hmm. subtly. And those are all being touched. Who's and touching them? That's what he's experiencing. Who's doing all the touching? Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So he's going to continue feeling this? Yes. As he's worked on? Yes, yes. and it will increase as well too. Mm. So just get ready for that. Mm -hmm. So Michael's going to be getting stronger and stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that Don could be doing on a spiritual nature for healing? that he can explore as a side career, just to help people in general. What can he be doing? He has not experienced any modalities. Mm -hmm. he, could, he could experience Reiki, for instance. Mm -hmm. There may be energetic openings that are in store for him with these experiences, he'll need to try them. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Just out of curiosity, when he's doing his photography, is he doing anything through his mind's eye to capture anything through that photography, spiritually? using any gifts he is mm -hmm. when he shoots sports mm -hmm. he is trying to 
kaputt. Difficult to put into words, but he remembers his days as an athlete and how important and energized he was during those years. And as he watches these athletes with a camera in hand, he's almost trying to push them energetically to great moments so that he can capture them. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're not always They're not always with the greatest intent. Many times he's just looking for the shot. <laughs> <laughs> but he has that ability to yeah. push that energy out. Yes. Without even knowing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with the seniors, he does the same thing. He just taps into his youth mm -hmm. and just pushes that into them. Isn't that what a healer actually does? Is sees them healed? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and in, in addition to that, too, the um, particularly with with the portrait photography, it's a lot like for him making music or writing fantasy. He's seeing the end result before it begins, mm -hmm. and so with all the nuances of the posing and the color and the way the light plays on everything, those are all pictures that he's seeing in his mind's eye mm -hmm. and just recreating them. Is there a block financially in any of these things that he's doing that's not allowing them to flow? Don is too concerned with making sure that his talents are justified with monetary gain. There's equipment costs. Mm -hmm. For example, for music, for photography. And he's concerned that those costs need to be recouped from the actual f photography, mm -hmm. from clients, from musical clients, from reading clients, but it does not have to be. The money that comes and goes should be like a breath. Mm -hmm. The money should just breathe in and breathe out again, mm -hmm. just like a breath. If a little comes in, that does not mean that a little comes out. Mm -hmm. He will not depend financially on these talents. In fact, in a perfect world, he would never charge for them. He would feel more comfortable not charging for them. But the worth is there mm -hmm. and this satisfies his family. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would you do a body scan on him now? And let's find out what's going on with his body. His issues with his left leg. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Why is it so messed up? A lot of abuse of his body when he was young and into adolescence and into young adulthood, lifting way more than he should have, not being kind to his body. There's a damage there that stems from the lower back. Mm -hmm. is, that what, is that the whole left side, why he's feeling it bad? Yes. So can we begin the healing today? Yes. Mm -hmm. And tell him what you're using for healing. I'm using rainbow light. Mm, beautiful. All colors of light. 
pouring directly onto the left side. Mm-hmm. And particularly in the spine. He says he has chronic back pain. Is that the same thing? That is the same issue. Mm-hmm. And he continues to abuse his back. So how should he be helping his back now? He needs to make a conscious effort for posture and he has to quit shooting athletes Mm -hmm. and become one himself. Mm. Not near enough exercise for fear of of damaging. It's a catch-22 for him. Mm -hmm. He can start out with something gentle, less gravitational, a pool, for instance. Yoga. He's never done yoga, and that's something that should be tried. Mm -hmm. Can I ask on his behalf for a guide that will motivate him to start exercising and working on his strength training? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would you continue working on his spine and his left side while we continue? Yes. All right. He says he has had burning in his eyes all his life. Where is this coming from? That comes from when he was very young. He was not cautious in his grandma's garage and there was a small bottle of a paint thinner with a brush in it. And when he opened up the paint thinner, this brush flicked across his eyes. And he screamed and his grandma picked him up and took him to the faucet in her home and rinsed his eyes out for a long time. But there was some damage that had been done. Mm -hmm. The top layer of his eye was burned. Now we know that all of the cells regenerate. We know that if we direct and command our body to regenerate, it will. Why hasn't that layer of cells regrown back? What's holding that back? I don't see the lesson. So do we need to continue having that irritation and burning anymore? No. All right. Would you begin working on his eyes now, please? I will. Thank you. And what's causing his constant headaches and migraines all his life? From sports Mm -hmm. or play, he has had his head knocked unconscious way too many times. And these are concussion symptoms. There's really no lesson for them to remain, but he has begun to find ways, spiritual nature, Mm -hmm. that he can begin to combat these headaches. Does he need to combat it or does he need to love his body? Because combating means that you're going against your own body. Yes. Should he be going against his own body? No. Mm -hmm. No. So what can we do instead of combating a headache? He needs to accept its existence and engage in relaxation techniques Mm -hmm. and not be satisfied with 10 minutes. A half an hour, 40 minutes, an hour. Really relax. Really relax. Mm -hmm. What happens as he continues to relax? Will these migraines subside? 
they will mm-hmm. he will continue to with with the proper work he will continue to oxygenate mm-hmm. his head there is a cycle that can be broken migraines mm-hmm. are cyclical and if he can take the time he can learn how to manage them okay very good I'd like to ask on his behalf for some healing on his head please I'd like to ask Archangel Raphael at this time to use his healing to begin oxygenating that brain begin connecting all of those areas that have been affected by all of that knocking about and let's begin expanding that area flushing it with lots of light lots of blood giving it its life back and I'd like for Archangel Raphael to continue working with his higher self at night while he sleeps. What's going on with his ear? He says he's had this high pitch ringing in his ears for as long as he can remember. What's that all about? That is damage. Mm-hmm. From what? What's the origin of that damage? It began with his his near drowning. Mm-hmm. He acquired during that time a phantom sound as he lost consciousness everything began began to turn extremely yellow and golden around him and he heard this tone what was that tone telling him Mm -hmm. that's it super very high pitch and it got louder and louder. That's the phantom sound that he hears, but there are other tones Mm -hmm. that are just a a result of damage and years in a band of the crash of the cymbals. Mm -hmm. And that's his right ear. So can we go back to that time before he had that drowning have him go back before he was that age when his ears were completely intact and let's begin to use a transplant of those cells in his ears and I'd like for him to use his mind to bring those cells that are intact into the body that he has now like a spiritual cellular transplant replacing all of those cells and I'd like to ask for the non-physical surgeons to assist him as they transplant those cells from that little boy Tell me what's ex- being experienced. I see a white tweezers picking fluff in the auditory portion where the nerve hits the brain and moving it around. It's in the brain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's 
an interesting sight. Mm -hmm. So I'd like those physicians to use any cell that they need from this little boy. happening now. One of the two tones that interweaves is much less. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask them to continue working on it and let's bring down that tone where he can hardly hear it. These are physicians. They specialize in this. And tell me when they are complete. The work will continue. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. How many physicians were working on him today? There were two. Wonderful. I'd like to thank them for that. Would you tell Don what he should be eating? What should his diet be like? Don poisons himself. Mm. Sugars. Mm -hmm. Way too many sugars. He goes on streaks of eating right and rewards himself with more sugars. Mm. What's that sugar doing to his body? Digestive issues. synaptic nerves in his legs, restless foot, all sorts of nervous issues, nerve issues. He should be fruits and vegetables, occasionally fish or chicken. Red meats are not agreeable to his digestive system. A little vibrational. Can I ask for a God on his behalf to help him with his diet? Perhaps a dietitian motivational mm -hmm. trainer so that he can eat right and start to exercise? Very good. Is there anything else that you can find in his body that we need tending to today? Hmm. No. He good. Looks good. What <laughs> about his chakras? Any blockages there? Anything else? the heart and the solar plexus don't have a sound flow through them. He's aware, he has good awareness of the crown, third eye, sacral and root. If he thinks about them, he can feel them, but the solar and the heart there's a dullness to them. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? Mm. 
It's awareness. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a blockage in that area that it's not dark. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like it's a He hasn't established a smooth channel between the two. Mm -hmm. So what does he need to do to open that channel? He needs to meditate and bring white light directly into that chakra on the breathe in and on the breathe out. He needs to distribute the energies from that chakra to the other. Okay. It's almost like a like a pipe that needs a pipe cleaner between those two. Mm -hmm. It'll happen. Good. So, who of the archangels can help him with that? I would ask for Raphael's help on that. Very good. So, I'd like to on his behalf ask for Raphael to work with his chakras please as he sleeps very good do you have any information for anybody regarding the new earth or the shift or the eclipse anything like that any information about that For those that are awakening, there's too much fear of the shift. Every moment you spend should be spent in joy and excitement. Choices have been made already. By feeling trepidation, for what will be a necessary event. Does you no good. For those enlightened, it will be a gentle time. Anything else? see nothing else. Wonderful. Do you have a final message for Don today? Love yourself with all your heart and soul. Everyone around you is there in contract to allow you to experience you've been doing a good job of transmuting your own fears and anxieties and guilts and shames what others do they do by choice to support their own experience and to increase, increase or maintain their own vibration. You are not responsible for them, but you can support them nonetheless. Continue connecting. and have confidence we are all one you can remove judgment in your lifetime it was powerful before but it will be gone 
It is going. Thank you, Elba. My pleasure. Thank you for a beautiful session. Do you have any advice for me today? Continue to be loving. Love yourself. Face yourself. So many people need you. It would not do well for you to burn out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to ask for all of the angels to continue supporting me in this very important mission. Are we complete? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow is right. That was a wild ride. Uh -huh. How do you feel? Wonderful. Do you remember everything? I remember a lot of it, but it was, it, it's like, it's like I was staring at white velvet and I would see images roll across mm. and they were they were like 3d imprinted images that were just popping out Wow and um, the hearing hearing that choir mm -hmm. and the blue was just intense <laughs> it really was and um what about the surgery in your ear yeah that was really that was really neat i saw i saw two people as the canadians say side by each <laughs> and one had a white tweezers and one would point and they would oh. transplant and this whole time they were doing this that there was fluttering? yeah that, that fluttering was like thumping i felt like my body was just lifting off of the off of the couch yeah, let me let me exchange those for these. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> these are fungi. This is for grounding. <sighs> and uh, how long do you think this journey was? What did it feel like to you? 25 minutes, half an hour. We're on two hours and 10 minutes right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor thing. You had to sit through two hours and 10 minutes. Oh, it was my goodness. fantastic. Wow. That fantastic. was wild. Fantastic. Is this something that you would like to share? It had a lot of wonderful information. It didn't seem too personal to you? Or There's only a little snippet that I'm going to take out because it has some mm. names of people. Mm. But everything else was pretty much really good. I would share it. I would share it if if it can do any good for anybody. It's, but it was beautiful. Well, it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> it was really wild, and 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 the cool thing too was that it seemed like every now and then I would, I don't I don't mean to say I would concentrate too much on your voice, but I would mm -hmm. start hearing nuances of your voice, and as mm -hmm. soon as I would begin to kind of slip away, I would just like I would mentally reach out and mm -hmm. and like um like Velcro, I would cling back to that. Mm -hmm. That white fluffy business with the 3D yeah. imagery that was going on, and oh that my goodness, wonderful. yeah, that was really neat. So wow, this was some session. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really amazing. You're still you're still vibrating. You're I still am. Shaking. I'm just I'm just shaking all over right now. This so is what just, does it feel? Um, like Alka Seltzer? Yes, yes. Like oh, what a relief it is. It's, <laughs> but it's a good it's a good buzz. It, it yeah. really is, and um, I'm just. I don't think I've been more awake in a long, long time right now. And I just feel like, yeah, I can just shake it all over right now. So what was the reason that you came to the session? What were you looking to find? Um, when I kind of began the, the journey of, of spiritual awakening, um, mm -hmm. your videos were the first thing that I, mm -hmm. I hit. And um, there was such an authenticity and 
um, although this was not a part of, of this particular session, but um, on an earlier video I had seen you uh, involved with releasing an attachment and, mm. and when uh, Archangel Michael was called down to assist, I just like broke down. <laughs> wow. I thought this is just too too amazing, and then it really it really hit hard. And I thought all I could think of to myself is I must engage in this process because of all the curiosities I have mm -hmm. and and um, and the, the self work that I think I could. Do now you traveled quite a distance. Right now we're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Where do you, how far did you travel? To From this? Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. How long is that? Oh, up here it's just a skip, it's 245 <laughs> miles or so. Yeah, that's, <laughs> people drive that every day just to go to a lake around here. Oh so, my yeah. God. <laughs> so is it worth driving all the way down oh, here for absolutely. this? Absolutely. How do you absolutely. feel? How's that, your ear? This, this ear is dimmer. And I'm not getting a ring out of the right one at all right now. Wow. So, so yeah. So that's a big improvement. We'll keep it up and and um, we we'll prom promise some additional healing along the way here. Wonderful. Too, so. Yeah, so, it'll yeah. be great afterwards when the video does come out to put some comments in there to see how how you've come along because I'm sure people people are always asking, you know, what happened? Did it really happen? Did it really heal? Mm -hmm. And you know, we just did a little transplant here today. Absolutely, a little spiritual transplant. Absolutely, and yep. some healing of the heart. We opened up the heart a little bit. We took out some shame and guilt in there. Yeah, and this this whole this whole section right now is just like <laughs> it's just plucking and fluttering and. Well, that's Michael still working on it. Right? <laughs> he said it was going to get worse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he boy. Was, he's, he's like. Tickling you all over the place. Yeah, that's so amazing. That's must amazing. Be doing some work in there right now. So we had talked about hypnosis before you started. Mm -hmm. How did it feel like to be hypnotized? At, at the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. um, when I first found myself, the beach was stark in my mind, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, the images were flowing. Mm -hmm. When you had me change the scene. Mm -hmm. is where I felt a little bit tripped up. I kind of felt like I waited and I waited mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, boom, there it was. Wonderful. And um, when, I, when I left that body, mm -hmm. um, it took a long time for me to see past the whiteness. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a cloud, but it wasn't a cloud. And all of a sudden, this just hole opened up and... Because you had quite a long conversation with with your cousin as he took you from place to place. Yes, absolutely. He was... Um, that was beautiful. Yeah, he's he's really, uh, really missed quite a bit. Just mm -hmm. a remarkable... How long uh, ago did he leave us? Um, it actually was on my birthday in about... I think it was right around 1990, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. he, it's been a while. He, uh, he was in, in the military in, in Vietnam and ended up dying from... Uh, it's it's the equivalent of mad cow disease, so mm -hmm. something that he picked up over there. But he was a uh, he was a really good musician, a brilliant guy, and just mm -hmm. his his own person that was really misunderstood by a lot of people. So this was really a shock to see. I, I had totally, I, almost in a weird way, I had totally forgot about him. And mm -hmm. um, boy, when I saw him, it was just like, oh my god. What a homecoming. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, what a homecoming. And a lot of people, I, I ask everyone that comes here about their ancestors because a lot of the times your ancestors are your guides. Hmm. And we may not remember them. Maybe we were babies when they died or, or we just didn't know them before we were born. They had passed. But some of these ancestors do guide us and we don't even think about them. Hmm. But I, I, it's important for me to get the names because sometimes, yeah, they show up. They're your guides. This was so, really unexpected. And it was at that point, just at that point when I saw him, that the clouds changed to a white, like a white canvas surface, mm -hmm. almost like a wool surface. And then after that, everything started to have like a, a 3D wow. um, I imagery to it. That, um, That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was really wild, really wild. So what would you like to tell everybody? What to expect, What to how to prepare for this? I think that um, 
I, I believe it was kind of important for me to uh, to listen a few times over the course of a couple of weeks to uh, Alba's visualization mm -hmm. um, video that she has out there, and I looked around for some others. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was a, a little snippet from Candace Goldman that I stumbled across, and mm -hmm. so I think those are really important to to put yourself in a um, kind of in the cockpit, so, so to speak, and, mm -hmm. and just um, but those. Those little visualizations or whatever we did prior, um, yeah. that was a really good yeah. precursor to this. That we really some, helped a lot. We do some warm-up exercises just so that you can get into the mode mm -hmm. <laughs> of mm -hmm. hypnosis. So that helped you quite a bit. That helped an awful lot. And um, and I think, too, uh, I have to admit that I had some expectations. <laughs> And, and I, didn't, I didn't know. I, I didn't know among the, the umpteen different uh, methods that, that there would be a, a, a connection that would happen here. Mm -hmm. And so this was really a surprise to me. Yeah. It was really a surprise when it shifted from this actual scene, the boat and guys coming in and all that sort of stuff, to this canvas thing that was going on. I didn't know what it was, but um, yeah, whenever I felt like I was losing it, I just would kind of jump back into it and cling to it like Velcro almost and, That's amazing. and just watch it roll by, almost like a like a timeline or something. That's but, amazing. That's great. Yeah. So really you great. recommend this to other people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just come with an open mind and and um, yeah, be, be prepared for it. I'm going to be really excited to, to rewatch this because <laughs> I don't really remember a lot of it right well, now. You, you said it was like 20 something minutes mm -hmm. to you and it was two hours, yeah. so there's a lot. It seemed like there were three or four major parts and all the rest I just can't really quite remember right now. So. That was great. And I was shaking a lot. I just felt like this just you're still shaking. flutters and twangs. I still am, yeah. Yeah, you're still vibrating. Hmm. So if you would like a session with me, go to my website, albawyman.com. My calendar is there, although I book way out. And like I said before, right now we're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I do travel all over the place. But the only way to find out where I'm going is by subscribing to my newsletter. It comes out about once a month and I do put out the next places I'm going to be visiting. All you have to do is when those dates come out, go to the calendar and book right away because they book very quickly. I have very limited sessions that I have as I go throughout. So if there's only five in the city, there's five people that, that need to get booked right away. So thank you for watching. I hope I get to see you sometime soon. And until the next time, bye. Give me that hug. Sorry, I'm sweaty. That's okay. <laughs> uh, sweaty and vibrant. <laughs>